Welcome to Let's Boop Snoots. I'm Welcome. Heidi. Oh my God, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Barrow. <laughs> and this and is today Let's we're going to boop snoots. <laughs> <laughs> so today we we have a couple of different things to talk about we had mentioned on the lap, last episode uh potentially exploring some of the dog parks in our area so we can compare and contrast some of those then mm -hmm. uh we wanted to discuss and evaluate a little youtube video we found on five uh, 15 things that your dogs love so we can we can boop about the hunt and I'm going to talk about something your dog might not love. Oh. And the reasons why. Oh. And then we can play a quick game of boop or snoot. Boop or snoot. Boop is yas, we like it. And snoot is no, we turn our snoots away from it. And it's usually we're evaluating a dog product of some kind. Mm -hmm. So I'm dying to know, Vero, how was Barkwood <laughs> Forest? <laughs> It was amazing. <laughs> so last week, everyone, Vero had found this place uh, outside of the city that we live in in Ottawa. These people set up their property and you can pay basically like an, uh, a membership fee and they have a big private area. You have to ha bring your dog for a meet and greet, right? Here, I'll, yes. I'll, I'm going to let you talk about it because you went and did it. Yeah. So you had to sign up. Um, so they have tours on the weekend. Uh, you have to sign up for a tour. They have like, I guess, a limited amount of spots. Apparently, a lot of people canceled that day. Uh, so we were only four, mm. four dogs. So there was Ralph. Um, there was a golden doodle. They were like instant buddies. Nice. They were just like playing in the parking lot um, while we were waiting for other people to arrive. There was a husky shepherd mix, mm -hmm. a shepsky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then there was a a setter, I guess. Yeah, there was a setter. Um, she was very like excited, young. Um, the Shepsky was a little bit older. Uh, the owners had only had him for a month and a half, two months. Uh, and then the Doodle, I guess, was older than Ralph. I think he was maybe. I think he was also six months, but he was massive. Oh, yeah. Like, so what did they do? Like, he you looked just... full grown. Yeah. So I'm like, was he six months? <laughs> mm. But yeah, Ralph was like a third of his size. <laughs> so what did you guys do? Like, did was there somebody there to facilitate everything? Or did you just sort yes. of like, okay. So there was um, a gentleman named Kevin. Mm -hmm. um, and he kind of assessed the dog. So before we started, he kind of told us like, how we were going to proceed. So the first 150 meters, um, we walked on leash. Mm -hmm. um, and before I get to that, when you when you get to the park, there's a gate, there's an entry gate, and then there's an exit gate. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's in there, there's a parking lot. And then there's another gate. So it kind of prevents your dog. Um, like if you let him out of the car, like all the gates should be closed. Oh, so he's okay. never going to run into the street. Mm -hmm. um, so we started, it was the first 150 meter, everybody was on leash. Mm -hmm. And then he started with two dogs off leash. So Ralph and Leo, who Is was the, the golden, golden doodle. doodle. Yeah. Um, they were off leash first. And the guy was like, how is Ralph's recall? He's like, I bet it's okay because he's a golden retriever and he loves his human. And I'm like, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, so he started with Ralph and Leo um, and then the Shepsky. And then the other dog, the setter, um, the setter, the setter actually had to leave because the, her recall was not good. So Aww. she was kind of like dragging behind and we kind of just waiting for her um, and she would run off and then they'd have to go get her. Um, so they had to leave. <laughs> I don't know. Like we were all waiting ahead. Mm -hmm. So I don't know like how that conversation goes. Like, I guess the owner kind of knows, right? Like, I can't believe how structured it is. Yeah, like I, I thought it was just like a meet and greet. And it's like, does everyone get along? Awesome. Okay, now you can come to the dog park whenever you want. No, and the guy, the guy that was doing the tour, like was with us the whole time. Wow. He walked with with us the whole time. So everybody was off leash. And he kind of just assessed like how they were playing together. Um, their recall. I think that was the biggest thing. Like he wanted the dogs to have good recall. Yeah, that's even though like the whole park is fenced in. Yeah. 
Um, I think that was like the biggest thing that your dog had to have good recall. And Ralph was really, really good. Yeah. I don't know that Gibbs would pass that test because if he's like, his, his recall is so, so it definitely needs work, but like he's used to being off leash at the cottage and stuff. But usually when I call him at the cottage, like he, he came every single time, like last weekend we were at the cottage, but when we're across the street at the park where there's distractions and it's like new and it's like, Oh, what's yeah. this smell? And what's that smell? Like I, I, he won't come back every, like on my first like recall. And I need to sort of walk towards him a bit, like he eventually does. Yeah, definitely. Not I'm sure right he, he'd be okay. Um, yeah. There was one that was borderline, but he still passed. Mm-hmm. Well, the Shepsky. <laughs> the Shepsky. <laughs> they tend to be like, I guess, more independent. Yeah. Um, Ralph is like playing, and I'm like, Ralph, come, and he'll like turn around and come to me. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So he's pretty. He's pretty good. Um, so he assessed like how they were playing together. The Shepsky was a little bit like more aggressive. Like if they were running, like he tried to grab like Ralph by the neck, but not like, not to like shake him or anything. Yeah, Just no. like, you know how they're like running side by side and the other dog is like trying to grab the other, like yep. the other dog. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah. so, um, I mean, that was okay. And then there's different loops right and every loop has a name mm-hmm. so when we started <laughs> if we turned left it was the Weimariner way yes <laughs> so apparently there's like a lot of like ferns there mm-hmm. um that way and then there was like the doodle drive the labrador <laughs> loop that's so cute <laughs> And then well there's done. this lady <laughs> well done barkwood forest <laughs> <laughs> so they initially bought um the piece of land Mm -hmm. and did the Labrador loop because they were dog walking business okay and then they just expanded um and they bought the land beside there so I think they're going to expand some more oh man tell them to put in a pool like a doggy water park that would be amazing um the guy his name is Kevin um towards the end of our walk there's like this big like I guess I don't know, like groove, like in the terrain. Mm -hmm. And he said like during spring, like early spring, it's full of water and dogs just like jump in there. And it's good because it's right at the end and you can, there is water to wash your dog. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, nice Mm -hmm. people. Nice. And then they have a private Facebook group and there's a lady on the Facebook group um, that takes pictures of the dogs that people post. Mm-hmm. And she paints like flat rocks and they're all along like in the park. Oh, can, that's so cute. With the dog's name on it. Oh my God. It's uh, very cute and it's very clean. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think I'm going to try it out just the yep. weekend, weekend and- pass. So at the end, um, they give you, it's like a tag you put on their collar. Yeah. There's a number on it and they have different colors. So Ralph is orange because he's only weekends. Yeah. And then there's like red and green for all week. Yeah. Um, and I think that's it. And then the guy said like, sorry, what about poop? Do they like, they just ask you obviously to clean up after your dog, but do they have a big yeah. dumpster for you to put it in? Yeah. There's something? green bins like okay. along the way mm-hmm. that you can put your dog poop in. Amazing. Mm-hmm. So it's super clean. Nice. Um, and he said like, if ever you encounter a dog, that's aggressive or whatever you just take down the number because they all have numbers on their tags yeah yeah i don't take know down the necessarily number and grabbing at them. an aggressive dog though mm-hmm. i said i don't know if you want to be uh, trying to manhandle an aggressive dog though trying to get at that number are the tags like super big and obvious <laughs> the tags are like this big oh okay so like a couple of inches they're pretty two, big two to three inches oh really that's well they're hilarious. big enough yeah, yeah two to three inches yeah I've seen, I saw a few dogs on the walk and you could see them dangling. You could see the, you could see the okay. number. Well, that's good. So that you're easily able to identify it. Cool. The only thing I find is that it's like a flat piece of metal and I find the edges are sharp. Oh. So I'm just kind of like, if they're rolling around. Or whatever. Yeah. Ouch. I think I might wear the number. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. boop to Barkwood Forest. Boop. Boop. Yeah. So talking about a couple of other parks in the area, I frequent um, an off-leash dog park called um, Bruce Pitt. 
Um, I've talked about it several times on the show. It's like a very well-known dog park in, in Ottawa. And the thing is, is that um, it's, it's pretty busy, like a good chunk of the time, especially if you have like a beautiful, like Saturday or you have a weekend where the weather's like really nice. Sometimes mm-hmm. you can't, there's no parking spots in, and it's a pretty m- big parking lot and there's no parking spots. There's people parking like outside the park on the street and then you know it's going to be like crazy full and the thing about that the thing that I like about Barkwood Force is that yes you're paying for it but at least it's like very controlled and that like I like that they are picky and who they accept to come there because Mm -hmm. at a place like Bruce Pitt you get like anyone can go it's like a free-for-all yeah where where you run into issues sometimes because not all dogs get along not everybody has good recall not everybody uh keeps a more aggressive dog necessarily on a leash or this type of stuff and so that like uh, you often hear of people running into problems at the dog park either with like an aggressive dog or a variety of different issues um but I, I go there like because I'm confident with my dogs. Um, like I said, Becky's a little bit older, but I have her on the e collar, and she is right next to me. And and if I let her stroll ahead and walk when there's nobody else around, but if other dogs come and like you know puppies that don't know and they come up and they're sniffing at her, yeah. and I can see her starting to raise the 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 lip. It's Becky here, and she's like right at my side, so then I can control. And if the puppy's sort of bothering her, we just sort of do a little jog. Well, I don't do a jog because then the puppy gets all excited or whatever. But or, or I'll just say, oh, um, you know, we're we're not the most friendly. Like if I see the owner or whatever, and they're like, okay, and they're like, come on, come on, and call them off. And like, it's it's I've never had an issue with Becky. Yeah. But again, I'm very mindful of it, and and I have her on a toit leash, a toit e collar, toit e collar. <laughs> Um, another park that I have gone to several times is, I think it's called David Bartlett Park, and it's out in this super hoity-toity area just outside of Ottawa where, like, a lot of, like, rich people live, and actually this park is sort of, like, in behind a lot of these, like, massive, like, mansions and stuff like this, so, um, one of, uh, my dad's friends lives in one of them, and he said he loathes, like, dogs and hates the dog park that's like right what? behind his house but his yard like all the yards are like fenced in for the most part I don't think I ever saw any ones that, that were open or anything like that um but this um Bruce Pitt is somewhat fenced in there's no actual like closed gates and stuff like this and uh especially since um I mentioned on a previous episode uh it got tornadoed <laughs> mm. so that ruined a lot of the fence so there are a lot of open parts and and uh some of the fence that there it's like farm sort of wire like fence and some of it is peeled up in certain spots and stuff like that. So it is definitely not a secure area, but it is a somewhat secure area. If you have, like, you just have to know the parts that are open and make sure if your dog doesn't have a good recall to keep them on leash for that part or be prepared to chase them down. Um, this other park that I'm talking about, David Bartlett Park, um, beautiful, nice, lush, like green grass. It's like, I've never it's, been there. Uh, it's along a river and th- like, it's like this old abandoned, it used to be a, um, a, a boat launch. So there's like this one part where there's this huge concrete slope going into the river. So if you've got a swimmy dog, then by all means go for it. Cause it's like a total swimmer dogs like oh. park. So it's for those who love the water and, um, the dogs all swim in there, but it is the Ottawa River, and sometimes the current can be a little bit. So make sure you again, your dog has good mm. recall even in the water, because you don't want them being swept away and then having to, uh, you know, start a full on water dog rescue. <laughs> and um, also just bring a towel or whatever. But David Bartlett Park is not fenced in whatsoever at all. So okay. there's no fences, like nothing, nothing. So um, you need to have a good recall on your dog to take them there. Or you can mm. like it. some people like I can see like their dog just likes the water. So they clip them on leash, bring them down to where that boat launch place is and they let them swim around and then they, they take them back. But it is like a beautiful tree, like open, like it, it's very beautiful. Um, but you just have to keep those things in mind. So I hit up different parks at different times yeah. depending on who I'm going with and that sort of thing. I'm interested in Barkwood Forest. My, I think 
my dad would have a heart attack if he found out I was paying like admission to go to a dog park <laughs> because we have a cottage. So our dog, yeah. <laughs> we have our own Barkwood forest. <laughs> you could go for our a tour. Own private and then another tour. Forest. And yes. then another tour. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, that would be, that would be interesting, but that's, that's a very neat concept. What, what, um, I'm currently doing school and we're working full time, but that I would be curious to reach out to those people to possibly volunteer if they need them or something like that. Yeah. That sounds like a neat concept. And especially if they're expanding and like, how can they expand and how mm-hmm. are they going to manage that? But anyways, neat concept, private dog yeah. park. Yals. Yals. Boop. Boop. I liked it. All right. Are we ready to move on to my list? Yes. So we can go through and just talk about some of these things. Uh, I mentioned to Vero, it's it's one of those YouTube videos. I don't know if this is a uh, reliable source that I'm checking from. Let me see if I have the makers of it. It's called Jaw Dropping Facts is the name of the YouTube channel that you can uh, subscribe to. And so I watched this video. It just caught my eye one day as I was, uh, you know, on the interwebs as we usually are. And uh, decided to give it a watch. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's some good points. So I decided to take some notes and we can discuss some of them. So the first thing on this list, it's the top 15 things that dogs love. The number one is your scent. So it says um, dogs love the smell of you. They, that's, you can, that's why you catch them laying on top of your dirty laundry. Sometimes they steal your socks. Uh, and it says, you know, for <laughs> dogs who are anxious or like ones that have issues, like when you leave, it says to throw like an old sweaty a sweatshirt in their crate or to leave by them so that they have your scent with them to calm them down um hmm. i agree with these statements yeah. becky lays on my dirty laundry all the time <laughs> <laughs> wiggum used corner. to swallow my socks yes yes he, he loved me so much so much he went to eat you he was like oh, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> i never tried the whole leaving a sweater actually did i i think i did with gibbs I think I put like a t-shirt of mine in his crate oh. a couple of nights to see if that would help. But uh, I don't remember. I mean, like he was fine. He still continues to be fine. So, but yeah. I agree with that. Dogs definitely like your smell. It's, it's why they come and smell our crotches all the time. <laughs> 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 they want to smell those, you know, beautiful body juices. <laughs> I agree with those statements. <laughs> yeah. Um, the second thing on the list was new roots. So it says, um, dogs love exploring new smells and, uh, their suggestion yes. was to like, it's part of their natural instinct, right? So, um, they like to go out, sniff around, ooh, what's this? Ooh, what's that? It's like part of like their in, uh, bred sort of natural instincts, like to go out and explore, mm-hmm. look, you're looking for food, you're looking for other pack animals, blah, blah, blah. And so it said, don't uh, use the same route every time. So switch it up, try different different ways. And I agree to this to a certain extent. Like um, it depends on on how you are working with your dog at the time. If you're trying to do leash training and a nice structured walk, I would say stay to the same route because then mm-hmm. they become accustomed to it. And um, especially when I was doing a lot of like leash work with our friend uh, Michelle. Um, with with Becky when as I was preparing for Gibbs and with Gibbs after the fact is um that there's certain parts where you you give them that right because like you don't want to let dogs and I've mentioned this on previous episodes fully give in to their instincts it's like when my dad takes them to the cottage there's no rules they run all over the place when they come home it, I notice they don't, they aren't listening as much to me and it's because you put them into that natural instinct to drive where Mm -hmm. it's hard to break through all the structured work that you've done with them so um yeah like once you have like good leash training skills and stuff for sure switch it up and then like knowing that you have a command like at certain parts where you can say break or whatever and that gives them the freedom to now go and sniff and explore and do whatever they want for whatever period of time and then it's back on leash and let's get back to work because that's giving them those two needs that we talk about all the time and it's the mental exercise of being focused and doing leash work but at the same time letting them run off and smell and explore for a little bit balanced training y'all yes balance what do you sound like when i walked wiggum you know how wiggum just didn't want to walk yeah (laughs) if i took like an 
if I went down a new street, Mm -hmm. um, he would walk better. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And he had like his spots where he really just like stopped. And like, I knew when he was going to stop. Yeah. And it's funny because it's like, um, that's so his personality too. It's sort of like, he like so indifferent, like, yeah, big deal. I've done that walk. I know those smells. (laughs) Give me something new, would you? Next thing on the list, which made me laugh, is it said, let them check their (laughs) (laughs) P-mail. So this talked about the whole urinating thing that they do, right? So you see, it said if you're walking your dog and you're noticing that they're like urinating and urinating and urinating. And like, I remember taking scraps for a walk in our old neighborhood. He would literally whiz at the end of every single person's driveway <laughs> while we walked. <laughs> he was a bit of a pee-pee freak. And um, it said, don't worry, they're not having bladder issues. And that urine is like, um, they they compare it to like social media for us. It's like they're making a little post, <laughs> leaving a little message. <laughs> get, yeah. And that's why when you see them sniffing, like fire hydrants are on walls or in certain parts of the grass. And you see them like really like sniff, like, you know, when your dog stops and they're really like, <laughs> like mm-hmm. really get their nose in there, like really taking a good sniff. It's like they're they're reading the Facebook post that that guy left, <laughs> that last guy left. And then they either choose to comment on it and they lift their leg and leave a post as well. <laughs> and that it's a good way of communicating. And it said some of them, it's like messages, like even like danger or it's like, I'm available. Woo-hoo. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was a neat little comparison and it's kind of true. So, but again, like depending on how you want to interact with your dog, like you don't want them just uh, around uh, all the time. you want to monitor their screen time <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny so for sure let them have some sniffs along the walk but it, you know unless you're doing like one of those exploring walks where it's like you literally just follow the dog and where they t- take you that's like a new concept to dog walking mm. um you know it, it all depends on how but i i get that and i thought that was a neat little comparison so yas to checking p mail <laughs> um the fourth thing that uh dogs love is human happiness so it said studies show that when you are stressed your dog is stressed and that they can tell by their keen sense of smell and that and they do have ability to read body language Ooh. so it talks about how they notice like if you come home and you've had like a terrible day and you're just like laying on the couch and you're depressed like um it talks about how they mimic so like they'll you know approach you s- slower like with their tail down you know, they come up to sort of comfort you and stuff. And that when your attitude changes and you're like happy and stuff, you can, you, they mimic again. It's like the tail's wagging. They may jump or bark. So it talks a bit about that. I think that's true to a certain extent. Yeah. Did, yeah. Would Wiggum ever um, feel sense of your mood or anything like that? He knew like when I was crying mm-hmm. that I like cried all the time. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. When I had the hiccups, he thought I was crying. Oh, really? Yeah. Every so, time uh, I'd have the hiccups, he'd come like sit beside me with his, his ears down. Yeah. And just like look at me like I'm sad. And I'm like, I just oh. had the hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that my dogs ever like notice that. Like, that, like, you know, if you've had a bad day or you're feeling sad about something. Like I can remember crying and they come over and they like sniff at me. Like they'd sniff at me like hey you okay oh Wiggum <laughs> would sit and just like his ears would be down and just like hmm? <laughs> yeah they would sniff at me and then like lay within the area and definitely watch me I think yeah but they uh, knew yeah I think they know I think they know yeah um the next one on the list is it talks about petting them where they enjoy the most so They say the Journal of Veterinary Behavior did a study that showed uh, more signs of stress when you pet them on the head. So uh, those signs of stress are like lip licking, yawning, elevated heart rate. And um, they said when they pet the dogs on the chest that that showed way less signs of of stress. So it decreased their heart rate. And uh, they just made a note, don't mistake... um, like a chest pet for like a belly rub because um 
it, especially if you don't know the dog, because when they lay on their backs, like that's like a, them showing vulnerability. And if you don't know the dog very well, don't reach for their belly because they, they might like oh, at you, especially yeah. if they don't know you. Um, it's funny because <laughs> I've seen that. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, no, sorry. He doesn't bite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, when he gets out of his crate, mm-hmm. he'll like lie down on his back. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey. <laughs> Hey, rub, <laughs> rub my belly. <laughs> Do you rub his belly though, or the up like chest? The up part, the chest. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's funny that you said because I can remember from some of the Stony Dennis videos, like when you're trying, because like, and that's part of the training I did with Gibbs. It was like to rile them up. I would really give them like a rigorous like scratch on the chest and be like, yeah, let's go. Like when we're going out or we're trying to do some like uh, fetch or retrieval or um, we're playing uh, t- together like tug of war or whatever. Like he, he yeah. said more to use that action as like to um, uh, engage them. Okay. And and it's funny because I pet my dogs like all the time on the head. Like and the head is the place that we go to the most. But it, it's true yeah. like because I think it's the first thing. It's the closest thing to us. And it's their face, which is so cute. And the ears, which like everybody loves. And I guess like, I guess if other people are handling your dog, because like you truly get to know your dog and their likes and dislikes, um, just for the first time approachers and stuff like that, you know, just maybe ask them to be gentle especially if you're starting to notice some of those signs like the yawning and lip mm-hmm. licking and that kind of stuff the elvis presley we call it the little lip yeah. lift there like, like something <laughs> i don't like. i think ralph loves the head pets though like oh, sometimes yeah. i'll like massage the top of his head and his like his eyes are closed yes he just looks like he's enjoying it yes Oh, I know. Mm. Well, and this is what I say too, because like when Gibbs lays next to me on the couch, I give him nice, but I think the difference there is like gentle. We're being like gentle and it's a massaging sort of thing and they love and they trust us. Yeah. But things to end, but it said general, like, and they did point out, they said generally dogs tolerate a lot of different kinds of touch because they're around humans so much, like they're domesticated animals. Right. But, um, I would definitely, these are like one of the areas where like, you build trust with your dog by protecting them in those situations. So if you see like a five-year-old squealing with their hands out and you know, they're going for the face and they're going to grab and smush and everything. And the dog doesn't know them. Mm-hmm. You have to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, we're going to be nice. Like we're going to pet again, like just break it down for them. Like, and kids are pretty good these days is because usually there's parents around with them and they say, can I pet your dog? And she say, yes. Um, he, like we're good. We're just could you do it gently please just approach approach them gently teach them like let them sniff mm-hmm. your hand then give them a nice gentle pet and stuff because for sure you're asking for a a bite a bite I if, you, if you just let people like free for all touch your dog you know and even adults like I said like I'm one of the worst I squeal and want to grab them so badly <laughs> um This next one I found very interesting and it's so funny because like after reading this, I was like, oh my God, I I do this like a lot of the time and then I just kept doing it over the weekend. So it said dogs love a loving glance. So it says dogs in general love attention, but studies show that when you look at your dog while cuddling with them, it releases oxytocin, the same as when a mother looks at her child. Ooh. And uh, again, it also said, be wary, only main, maintain eye contact with dogs that you know and trust, because like that can be mistaken for like a dominance thing, right? Mm-hmm. So if you don't know a dog and you're like lovingly like glancing at them, they're probably just like, why are they staring me down? <laughs> I don't know them. No. <laughs> 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 but um, I do that all the time. I sent Vero a photo this morning of me trying to do my homework and Gibbs just like lovingly staring at me from the other <laughs> yeah. couch and I was like you the little bugger you're distracting me <laughs> you're <laughs> luring me over there to give you gentle pets and it said um yeah to just like like glance at them like like look at them and like a gentle petting and gentle like talking to them like they love oh which is true I always like when he especially when he comes and put his head in my lap I just pet him and I go I love you <laughs> oh, and I give him nice pets cute. I love so him. cute um the next one also very interesting it said dogs love walks even over food 
A study oh. in the UK explored what words dogs respond to most or love to hear the most by, again, checking heart rates. And walk was the top word every single time, increasing their heart rates by 36%. I disagree with that, with Ralph, at least. And Wiggum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It said um, uh, f- the next words up were treat, get it, and fetch. Oh. And then it just talked about how, and and this I agree with with my dog. So seriously, like if I go to the front and I have to move their leashes out of the way to get like a set of keys or something like that, oh, the very jingle of their of their collars, <laughs> like you can see them like if they could be in a dead fast sleep and you can hear the boom and the ears up. <laughs> and sometimes they come running and I'm like, no, no, no. Like it's so funny because like sometimes I need something under the leashes and I'm like, oh God, they're gonna get like all excited, like, oh, and I'm like trying so Do quietly I really need to- that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gently trying to move the collars around. But as soon as like the littlest clink, it's so funny. I'm sure they hear like the exact pitch, like, that's my collar. Time for a walk. <laughs> they get so stoked and they come running like immediately. Mm. so um i agree with i agree with that but again like obviously studies aren't like black and white like like wiggum obviously is an exception to many (laughs) of these rules ralph ralph would not walk the other day because it was dinner time i'm like i'll just walk him like a little walk before dinner Mm -hmm. no he kept wanting to go back i fed him and then he walked super well (laughs) wow that is so funny eh yeah. He's like a little OCD. He's like, uh, no, dinner first, then walk. <laughs> then walk. Ma, come on. Um, so the next one it said is windows. It said, although seeing oh. is, is not their primary sense, they can still see pretty clearly up to 20 feet. And it said, so open the blinds or curtains or whatever, because dogs love staring out the window for hours, which is true. That's mm-hmm. where my dogs spend most of their time. And yeah. then it said if the, if they are barking or aggressive, then they may need more stimulation or exercise. And that part I disagree with because I have I do have to say, I, I think I mentioned a couple of times, I live right across the street from the park. So every person and their dog walks past my house to go to the t- dog park. <laughs> and Becky and Gibbon like to uh, bark at each one that does this. And um, I think part of that too, it just depends on where the window is. If you have like a big open backyard with trees and stuff and there's animals, I'm sure they like to watch and stuff like that. But if somebody's yeah. approaching your house, that's like, again, it's like protective, like instinct. They're going to bark and alert you. Yeah. And unfortunately, if your house is in front of a park where there's tons of people walking by, it makes for a barky household at times. <laughs> um, so yeah, that one was interesting. The next one is a challenging puzzle. So this one is interesting because it talks about the mental stimulation. So it said, keep in mind when buying toys for your dog that um, especially the ones, and I think we've mentioned a few of them on the show, um, buy uh, like a puzzle toy that has a reward. So like there's different ones where it's like if the dog pushes on something, it opens a door and then there's like kibble in there. Mm -hmm. And, And then I think I mentioned for a boop or snoot recently because a family member of ours just um, adopted a dog and he's a beagle. So they got him a scent mat. So same thing. It's like a blanket that you put on the floor with like pockets and uh, different things. And they sniff at them and open the flap and the food's underneath. Yeah. That kind of stuff. So, but there's lots of different ways. It says a challenging puzzle. Um, My, my son likes to play hide and seek with the dog. So he'll come put him in a sit stay with a, some kibble in his oh, hand and then he, he goes and hides and then Gibbon has to come and find him. It's like the cutest thing ever, but great mental stimulation and exercise. Yeah. Um, so different stuff like that. And it can, it doesn't even have to be these grandiose toys or games. It, it's, it's mental stimulation. It can be as simple as having them sit, stay and wait for their food, wait for their dinner. Mm-hmm. And ha- putting them in a sit, stay That's for hard. five minutes is like exhausting to them because like all they want to do is eat the food and they're being forced to focus on you wait for the release word i don't make gibbon wait too long because he drools too much and it makes my floors dirty (laughs) 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 but there's lots of different ways to mentally stimulate your dog um the next one again it's it's a tricky one it says a favorite meal it says every once in a while prepare them a special meal I said it 
uh mm. they said don't make it like too many treats like excessive treats because that's not good for them and it said and obviously not like you know be careful of what human food that you give them because it can be harmful and we did an earlier show of that like way back at the beginning of like foods that are harmful to your dogs what's safe and what's not but i agree with that like at christmas time we make them like something a little special like yeah. maybe even make them like a little beef and rice every once in a while switches it up and they feel special like ooh. I get to do you think they know though I well I think I think that it's something different and it smells different and they can smell that it's what we're eating too I think they get a bit more excited yeah I would say so because that has everything to do with like again scent like like earlier like it's it's like oh no that's different and that smells real good Mm. (laughs) that smells real good num is num is num num um the next one it said is they love eating in private. This one kind of makes sense to me too. It said it needs, yeah. they, they need their space while they eat. And uh, they say, try not to put their food bowls in high traffic areas. And obviously depending on where you live and what type of house you have or whatever, like you, you got to find a comfortable space for them. But like, you know, when, when you go back to like the origins of dogs, which is like wolves and stuff like that, when they eat together as a pack, like they rip off stuff and take it away and eat by themselves. Yeah. And, and if somebody comes by, it's like, nah, it's mine. And that's why they're sort of my chunk. Yeah. Protective over their food and stuff. So my I get it. I get that. But uh, again, it depends on the, to the extent at which you will be training your dog. So remember like the episode we did about canine intervention and we were talking about the security training dog and he was talking about how it's like the most high performance amount of training because you Mm -hmm. are giving them a word to uh, communicate to them to attack. And yeah. then, which is like their most natural, like, like you've trained them for that and then and to attack. And then the next part, which is the most critical part is the release. And it, I would say that the next thing down from that would be like food. Cause it's their, it's their food. <laughs> yeah. And that's like a very natural thing. Same thing. Like the wolves don't let people come and just take the deer leg, like away from them. <laughs> like they will, they will mess you up. Mm-hmm. So it depends if you, so if you want like a super trained dog, like I watched a video with in solid canine training that talked about dogs with aggression over their food and that he, within 20 minutes, uh, had trained this super aggressive G Shep to, to stop eating. So he, he could say a command where the dog stops. So now he can pick up the bowl and take it away. And it's the same thing. Like I always say, you don't want your, your dogs guarding anything. So I don't know. I would say food is somewhat of a, it depends on your dog. If they're showing aggression while they eat, you need to do a bit of work there. But at the same time, yeah, give them their privacy if they're yeah all good in the hood with it. All right. The next one is, and I don't agree with this one at all. I think they started to stretch. They started to run out of ideas near the end of the list here. <laughs> It said they love running errands with you and it talked about they love exploration and it's about it's better than leaving them at home. But like, I, I'm not going to take my dog out to run errands because it said uh, again, like they, they're like, oh, but make sure not to leave them in the car yeah. for extended periods of time. So if I'm if I need to go do anything like grocery shopping or unless I'm going for a visit somewhere and I say, hey, can I bring my dog? Then, yeah, absolutely. So, like, I guess pick and choose where you're taking them to. If it's, like, a dog-friendly place or a family member's house or another friend who has a dog and they love to play, like, for sure, take them with you. But I, maybe the wording was – it was just poor choice of wording because yeah. running errands to me is, like, you need to go – When grocery shopping. Get your stuff done. Yeah, exactly. Grocery shopping. And if you leave your dog in the car, you're going to end up coming out with, like, police there and people who broke your window to make sure your dog wasn't trapped in there for long periods yeah. of time. People are very conscious of that, by the way. Yeah. Um, It's good. And then this next one, again, the the end of the list was, I think they were running out of ideas. It said, dogs love being accepted for who they are. So (laughs) it sounds ridiculous at first. And I was saying to Vero, I don't think dogs have like these existential crises where they're like, why can't they just love me for who I am? (laughs) 
<laughs> I think more what they were getting to here is that you have to remember at the end of the day that this is an animal and they are going to do animal things. So if you're taking your dog for a walk and they're like, oh my God, check out this dead squirrel and they pick it up, like you can't be correcting them like nonstop. It's like the equivalent yeah. of being a helicopter parent. So you can't just be like, no, 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 for every time they're doing something that is normal to dog behavior they yeah s- if they smell a giant pile of poop you can't be like no no and no. that's where that's where it's like your commands come into play so it's like you're not correcting them all the time or like nagging at them constantly it's just like leave it and you just keep going mm-hmm. you just keep on going with your walk and that type of stuff but you, ha- you have to let them be dogs yeah becky just like it drives me nuts when becky goes into the big mud puddle but she's a dog and she just loves it. She I, loves I, it. I call her a pig dog when she goes in those mud puddles. But, <laughs> but she's a dog. She's a dog. Um, and then uh, the last one on the list was vacation. And it said, you know, don't always leave them at a sitter or like a doggy daycare. Try planning a trip that includes them. They are your family members Aww. after all. And I mean, that's like a extenuating circumstances and they even talk about how there's a lot of pet friendly hotels which is true there are more yeah there are I can remember even going to Banff like Louise and they had like dog walking services and everything at like the Mm -hmm. chateau there and stuff like that so wow I think the greater community is understanding that people are more and more people are having dogs and that they are like their family members and that they need to travel with so I think several other industries are starting to recognize that and accommodate for it so and that's all I got from my list that's so all you like, got like I said um it's a pretty it's I think it's there's some nice tips and tricks there of just being like a like a, a good dog owner and engaging with your dog like and um so there's some good takeaways there is what I'm trying to definitely say. but yeah. Heidi what is the one thing that dogs don't like yes. ba, ba, ba. what is it rain they don't like rain well, some dogs don't. It's tr- no, I agree with that. Gibbs doesn't. I let him out the other night, and he was like, "No, nope, no." Nope, they nope, just nope, stay nope, like nope. in the doorway, and they're like, "Ugh, yeah, <laughs> no." So why? 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 So there's many reasons why dogs might not like rain. Let's hear it. There's there's the obvious one where it's wet mm-hmm. and uncomfortable, just like us. Like we don't like going out in the rain. Mm-hmm. Um, although we have jackets and we have umbrellas. Mm-hmm. so that helps us out but dogs I don't know like wet paws maybe that's uncomfortable mm-hmm. um, dogs are more sensi- sensitive to barometric pressure so the atmospheric pressure changes oh. when it rains oh. and they can sense that mm-hmm. I had read like a while ago um, mm-hmm. and I saw this in this article as well the sound Oh, okay. The sound of rain. So the sound of rain hitting uh, the ground. Yeah. Like we can hear it a little bit, but dogs probably hear hear it even more. more. Yeah. And then hitting the roof, hitting the windows. um, It could be scary for them. Yeah. Everything smells more strongly as well. Yes. Yes. When it rains. That makes sense. So maybe some different unpleasant smells. And then the last one. Mm Mm-hmm. Rain sometimes means thunderstorm. Ah, yes. Thunderstorm and lightning. Mm -hmm. I can see shadows. Shadows. (laughs) Shadows. (laughs) I could see Heidi in a video right now and there's somebody in the room and all I can see is like a shadow walk by. (laughs) It's a little bit freaky. so funny. (laughs) I always Um, let them know. So you yeah. can kind of get your dog used to getting their paws wet, like inside in the bathtub. Yeah. Um, and and again, like um, like we've talked about it in other episodes and stuff, like we, we tend to humanize when you're introducing your dog to something that they don't particularly like. And you're like, oh, oh, it's okay. And, you, and your instinct is to say it's okay mm-hmm. and pet them. But what you're doing is you're rewarding the behavior that you don't want in that particular situation. So it's the same thing, like fireworks, thunderstorms, dogs get scared. They come, they're shaking to you and you're like, oh, baby, it's okay. And you're petting them and all you're doing is rewarding them. You should just them. be pretending like there's nothing there. Yeah, you just say, or or it it's very counterintuitive, but you just say, no, uh-uh, whatever your no noise is, yeah. t- tell them to lay down, put them in a sit stay, help them focus on something else rather than being afraid in that moment. 
Yes. Is my advice. Mm-hmm. All right. You got a boop or snoot for I us? I got a boop or snoot. What is that? And this is something that I'm actually going to test. Oh. So we can boop or snoot. And then in a few days, I'll let you know a more if we were right. Boop or snoot? So it's called Wagonic, 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 Portable mm -hmm. Ultrasonic Insect Repellent. Oh. Mm-hmm. So it emits, um, it's a six span ultrasonic infinite loop scan. So hmm. it emits uh, like a frequency and it's, uh, it's inaudible to humans and pets and it keeps fleas, ticks and mosquitoes away. Interesting. I'm looking mm -hmm. at it. It's it, it's looking like it's about the same size as your Barkwood Forest uh, tag. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so tick, please, and Ra spiders. Ralph is going to be weighed down, man. <laughs> <laughs> Flies, bed bugs, and cockroaches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to have strong neck muscles for, <laughs> for life. <laughs> for life. <laughs> Well, I'll be curious to know whether this works or not, because I find like, um, especially recently, and in, in, again, the time of year for us as we're heading into summer here in Canada and in Ottawa, um, there's a, tons of ads for lots of different mosquito, different type stuff, stuff for even kids. Like there's these patches you're supposed to put on your kids and it keeps mosquitoes away. There's like different ultrasonic, like they're starting to get more digital and like, like electronic styles with like mosquito yeah. stuff. Like I find, and I, and, and I'm always skeptical, skeptical if any of it works. Yeah. So, so we'll, we're going to find mean, out. And like, there's, there's, different like home remedies that you can do to spray your dog with before you go out there's like also products that people make that you spray on them before you go out repellents like all these different things i don't know i feel like this one would be easy though oh that one would be an easy one it's rechargeable I, i'd be curious yourself. to use that on gibbon because on gibbon you can see because of the short hair right like we went up to the cottage last weekend and when he turns on his back for a belly rub it, it's like it looks like he has like chicken pox or measles. <laughs> so <laughs> well, I'm going to try it on myself because human can wear it. Oh, really? So I'm going to see if it works. Are you the type of person that's like a mosquito buffet? Oh, yes. Oh, okay, I was good. a mosquito buffet at Barkwood Forest. Oh, you were, eh? Yeah. And I've... I had long pants on and long sleeves and they still mm -hmm. bit me through. Yep. Yeah. That's like me and my younger son. We are the mosquito buffets. <laughs> but uh, my so husband we'll and my out. older one, not as much. Well, um, I'm going to say... So I'm going to boop. I'm going to boop because there's really good reviews um, oh. that are not on the actual website, like mm -hmm. the company's website. Yeah. And how, how much? On, it is $42. Hmm. I got mine cheaper, though. I had a discount. But I okay. feel like it was... I feel like the price went up. Hmm. hmm. Well, I will boop for now, but it's going to be a boop with a follow up. Yes. <laughs> once you test the product, <laughs> boop with I'm a follow up. I'm booping because I hope it works. <laughs> B to the F. <laughs> boop with a follow up. All right. And, and is that, that a wrap? Up? Okie dokes. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys, and join us next week on, on Let's, Let's Boop Suits. Boop. Boop.